All right, I'm excited today to tell you about the Cauchy Hadamard test, which is a very powerful tool for describing the region on which a complex power series converges. So let's say we have a power series, f of z, and that's a summation, n equals zero to infinity, a n, z minus a to the n. So any arbitrary power series. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to attempt to, well, that's redundant. We're gonna try to apply the Cauchy root test to the terms. Notice that when we take the one over nth power of z minus a, that's really z minus a to the n, that's really easy. But when we take the one over n power of a n, then who knows what we're gonna get. So the cauchy hadamard test tells us, focus your attention on the coefficients, a n, and do to them exactly what you did in the root test. Take the absolute, well, the modulus of those coefficients to the one over n power and take the limb sup of that. Basically, we're applying the root test to the coefficients here and completely ignoring the z minus a to the n power. Now that's gonna give us some answer, okay? Then we're gonna take the reciprocal of that. Now, technically we have to worry about, can we take the, the reciprocal of that? Um, if that gives you zero, uh, then r should be, we should regard r to be infinity. And if this limb soup gives you infinity, then we should regard r to be zero. Um, so we're gonna take the reciprocal of this and that's gonna be this value cap r. And then the rest of the cauchy hadamard test tells you about the convergence of the sequence, uh, the, the series, in terms of this value cap r. And let me just refer to, you, to the picture straight away. Um, we will get a behavior of convergence, which is a ball on which the sequence converges in the complex plane. That ball will be centered at the point a, which is the, the same a here. Um, it will have a radius of cap r. So this r is gonna be called the radius of convergence after we prove this. Um, so this ball will have a radius of r, and we will get convergence on the interior of that ball and divergence on the exterior of that ball. But wait, there's more. If we take a value little r slightly, slightly smaller than cap r, any value, any value less than cap r, and we form a ball centered at a of radius little r, so a slightly smaller ball illustrated here in blue, then on that ball, we not only get convergence of the power series, but we get absolute uniform convergence of the power series. This is really, really important to have this absolute uniform convergence because this gives us all kinds of power to deduce that certain things commute with limits and the results of certain additions are continuous. And you know, this absolute uniform convergence is really important to us. Um, furthermore, uh, the test declares that if Z is actually outside this ball in the exterior region here, then the function diverges. And that, is certainly the easier part of this thing to prove. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna model this proof on what we did with the Cauchy root test. Uh, we're gonna find some S value in between the interesting values. So um, let's focus on this thing first. Um, notice here that the cauchy hadamard test doesn't explicitly declare the convergence in this region. Um, it just declares the absolute uniform convergence on the blue region and the divergence outside. But that's obvious because if you have absolute uniform convergence on that blue ball for every little r less than cap r, then you can just sort of say, well, let's take little r larger and larger and approaching cap r, and we won't get absolute, we won't get uniform convergence that way, but we will get convergence everywhere within the interior of the ball. Notice furthermore, the cauchy hadamard test does not say what happens on the boundary of the ball. For z whose distance from a is exactly equal to cap r, then this does not tell us whether it converges or diverges. And in general, it's a very, very hard question to assess whether uh, such a function will converge or diverge on the boundary of the ball. So that's where the, the, the very hardest questions reside, right on the boundary. And sometimes we get really interesting behavior there. So um, let's look at the proof. So here we have little r is less than cap r. So um, proof of one. So if little r is less than cap r, and notice they're both positive numbers. Um, I didn't say so specifically. So let's say if zero is less than little r is less than cap r. So then um, one over r is less than one over little r. And so uh, we get uh, the limb soup of uh, absolute, well, modulus a n to the one over n is gonna be strictly less than one over r. And here I am declaring that the limb soup of something is strictly less than something. And so you can relate this to the situation in which we had a similar statement in the Cauchy root test. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing 
we're going to um, assign an intermediate value. And we're going to say that for most values of n, we have less than that value. So let's do that. So there is some s uh, in the real numbers so that the limb soup of absolute a n to the 1 over n is less than s, which is less than 1 over r. So uh, this gives us an intermediate value that's strictly greater than the limb soup. And whenever we have a value strictly greater than the limb soup, that value, s, cannot be exceeded by infinitely many terms. Um, it cannot be even matched by infinitely many terms in this sequence. And so we know that for all but finitely many terms of the sequence, uh, they are less than s. So for most, and I mean by most, the same thing I meant in the previous video on the Cauchy root test, I mean for all but finitely many. So for most n, we have uh, absolute a n to the 1 over n is strictly less than s. And again, most means all but finitely many n. And then again, for most n, we have uh, we can raise this to the nth power, and we get absolute a n is less than s to the n. And now this is very suspicious. We have an s to the n, and this is acting as a, as a bound for a n itself. What we don't have is a bound for the actual terms of the series. You see what distinguishes this proof from the, the Cauchy root test is that that was for a, a series of complex numbers. This is for a series of complex functions. And I'm not doing anything with this z minus a to the n. And so I'm going to have to get to that eventually. So let's get to that now. Let's put a z minus, let's multiply both sides of this equation by z minus a to the n. Um, so we're going to have absolute a n times, now I'm going to actually multiply by the, the modulus of z minus a to the n. And then that will be less than s times the modulus of z minus a to the n. Now, what's the modulus of z minus a to the n? If, um, if z comes from this ball, then it can be no more than r. And so um, let's assert now, uh, sorry, this should be s to the n, right? Um, and so this z minus a to the n cannot exceed r if z comes from that ball. So let's say that. So that's s to the n, r to the n, if z is in this ball. OK. Now, s to the n, r to the n um, is, well, how should we say this? So s is less than 1 over, n, 1 over r. And so um, this is the nth power of, um, well, sr. But notice that sr, if s is less than 1 over r, then sr is less than, uh, well, 1 over r times r, which is 1. So. The key here, here is that we have an nth power of something sr, and the equation, the inequality s less than 1 over r, tells us that sr is less than 1 over r times r, which is 1. So sr is less than 1. We have an nth power of something less than 1. And that's good, because now we're comparing the terms of the series itself, or rather their moduli, to the nth power of a non-negative real number, which is known to be strictly less than 1. And so we're all set up for a comparison against the geometric series, which we can do by means of the Weierstrass m test. So um, here, notice that um, the summation of sr to the n converges. And sr is a constant uh, independent of z, right? So it's appropriate to, for that to be the mn in the Weierstrass m test. So that converges. So by the Weierstrass m test, what do we know? Um, we know that this thing, summation, converges absolutely and uniformly.
on V A R. So we get an absolute uniform convergence on B A R. Notice that I had to assume that B that Z was in B A R in order to get this equality. And so I, I only get it on B A R and I won't get the same thing on B A cap R, which is this larger and black ball. So that establishes that if we back off from the radius of convergence a little bit, then we get an absolute uniform convergence on the resulting ball. Uh, next, we want to show that if we have a Z which is outside that range, then we fail that same test. And this is much easier. Um, so uh, let's do that next. So let's let Z be outside the ball of radius cap R. Uh, I should say this is actually, this is wrong. Um, I need it to be on the exterior of this closed ball. So the best way to say that is outside the closure of the ball. What I really mean is that the, the distance from Z to A needs to be strictly greater than this cap R. So sorry about that. Um, so, the, so what this is really guaranteeing us is that this thing is strictly greater than cap R. OK, um, then what we can do is we can just directly apply the Cauchy root test to prove divergence. So let's directly apply the Cauchy root test to f of z. So what does that give us? We need to calculate the limb soup of the modulus of a n z minus a to the n to the 1 over n. And that's going to be the limb soup of uh, modulus a n to the 1 over n times modulus z minus a to the n to the 1 over n, which is, of course, the limb soup of a n to the 1 over n times uh, well, that's just z minus a. That's just z minus a, right? So, so that's z minus a here. Now, this is a limb soup of a sequence which depends upon n, but now z minus a uh, is completely independent of n. And so it's a constant from the point of view of the limb soup, which is really reasoning about what happens as n goes to infinity. This doesn't have an n in it. So we can factor it out and we get z minus a limb soup uh, n goes to infinity, and uh, a n one to the to the one over n. Now this thing, by definition, is one over r, right? So this is then going to be z minus a modulus times one over r. And the presumption here was that z minus a exceeds r in modulus, and so this is greater than one. And so by the Cauchy root test. So this is the C, this, this, this limb soup of the nth roots of the moduli of the sequence terms. This is the thing that we called C in the context of the Cauchy root test. And we've just shown that C is greater than 1. And so I'm going to cite the Cauchy root test. Um, so we get divergence. So f of z diverges. Not everywhere. I mean, for that particular z, which is outside that ball. So that establishes divergence here and absolute uniform convergence here. And that's a cauchy hadamard test. We see surprisingly here, I mean, what to me, what's amazing about this is that the geometry of the convergence of a, of a power series is always fairly straightforward, fairly simple. I mean, it can be hard to calculate R, but it's always a ball, right? It's always a simple, perfect circle on which that we get convergence on the interior of the circle and we get divergence outside that. And so we always get a very simple geometry for the convergence of these things. And it's always effectively governed by the behavior of the simple geometric series, which all of this is boiling us down to comparison to simple geometric series by means of the root test. So um, we always get this relatively simple convergence. Now, I should point out here that if this limb soup is 0, then r is infinity. And that's a very, very important case. Um, that means that the function is. Um, going to converge on the entire complex plane. So we get a power series 
but for every possible complex number z, then we get convergence. We still don't get absolute uniform convergence on the entire complex plane by that, but we do get absolute uniform convergence on any ball of any radius. So basically any compact set um, in, well, or any open ball of any fixed radius, any bounded set will get, um, will get absolute uniform convergence for that. And there is a sort of a worst case scenario, which is that this limb soup is infinity. Uh, that can happen. In that case, the radius of convergence is zero and we get no convergence at all, except a trivial convergence at A. If you plug in Z equals A here, you can see that you automatically get convergence and you get convergence to the value, uh, the first coefficient A sub zero, because that zero to the zero will be one in that case. So, um, so if the limb soup is infinity, then we get R equals zero and we get essentially no convergence, only convergence at that point, um, which is kind of silly and doesn't, doesn't help us do complex analysis. So those are the extreme cases. All right, thank you.